Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention ishtanibu about alcohol and likewise about taghut? But wala taqrabu for zina? Are they synonymous? Or is one more severe than the other? This goes back to a discussion among the linguistic ulama pertaining to the issue of whether there is synonymous terms in the Quran. Some said there's some synonymous terms in the Quran, meaning there's words in the Quran that have the same meaning as other words. And therefore, terms like this, wala taqrabu and ishtanibu, they could have the same exact identical meaning. Some ulama said, and this is pertaining to the Quran specifically, they said there's always a fine line between the terms that appear to be synonymous. According to them, there's a delicate, distinguished, special meaning that differentiates words that appear to be synonymous in the Quran. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala seemed to agree with the other opinion because he said synonymous terms in the Quran are either rare or non-existent. Here he's asking about wala taqrabu and ishtanibu. Both la taqrabu and ishtanibu are synonymous and they mean to shun, they mean to avoid, don't go near. But in the Quran, there's possibly a delicate difference in the meaning or how they're used. Ijtanibu, some said, pertains to matters that are normally seen in front of you, but it's not intended. They're just in your way. For example, someone's heading to the masjid. His destiny, his goal is the masjid. But there's speed bumps on the way that he needs to avoid. Speed bumps that he needs to get away from. He intended the masjid, not the speed bumps. But he needs to avoid those speed bumps. Ishtanibu usually comes in the context of what's moral or intangible. It's usually not in the context of being limited to a specific place. It's usually not restricted to time, nor does it have a reason. Let's take an example that will clear that up. He mentioned about Taghut. وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ اعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ الطاغوت. We sent among every nation a messenger to declare to them to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and اجتنبوا الطاغوت. واجتنبوا الطاغوت to avoid, to keep away from the Taghut, to shun the Taghut. Based on what we said earlier, let's apply it here. Worshipping the Taghut is intangible, it's spiritual. It's not limited to a certain specific place. It's not restricted to a time, nor is there a reason in the verse. It's prohibited at all times and all places. La taqrabu now, wa la taqrabu, is not like the unintended speed bumps on the way to the masjid in the previous example, in the previous term, ishtanibu. It's generally referring to matters one purposely goes for. Wala taqrabu usually comes in the context of referring to material things. Things with a place of existence or something similar in nature to that. With wala taqrabu, you usually find that the prohibition on approaching it is somehow conditional upon a time or a reason. With matters where there's wala taqrabu mentioned, if one violates it, there's usually an actual interaction between the human and the prohibited matter. And let's take an example on that to clear that up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
وَلَا تَقْرَبَ هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ Pertaining to Adam عليه السلام وَلَا تَقْرَبَ هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ Don't go near the tree, otherwise you'll be among the ظالمين, the wrongdoers. So based on what we just said, the tree that's deterred from is something material. It's a place, a thing, a tree, an existent tree. In the verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the reason. فَتَكُونَ مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ You will be among the wrongdoers. The interaction between the human and the matter that's deterred from is eaten from the tree. And there's actually, if I'm not mistaken, six verses with ijtanibu and six verses with wala taqrabu. Keep in mind, both la, wala taqrabu and ijtanibu confirm that something is haram with an additional meaning. It's haram with an additional meaning. لا تقربوا and اجتنبوا is more emphasized in prohibition than the mere word haram. It's a complete, total distancing from that which is forbidden. It's not only haram. You must stay away from something completely and stay away from what leads and takes to it. If being close to what's forbidden is prohibited by the terms la taqrabu and ishtanibu, then the act itself is, of course, forbidden as well. With the more severe prohibitions, you'll see wa la taqrabu and ishtanibu. Avoid it, shun it, stay away from it. Don't even go near it. Ishtanibu and la taqrabu have a meaning above the meaning of haram with the delicate linguistic difference between each of those terms as we mentioned.